Local news, national news, even feel-good news. Delivering the topics that are relevant to you. That's why I listen to Joe. He covers it all. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Well, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about all the things. But we're going to talk about that one thing that everybody on your Facebook is talking about right now. Well, we have to. We have to at least mention it, okay? My name's Laura Lee. I'm in for Joe Kelly today. And I have got bad news and I have got good news on your Joe Kelly front. The bad news is, is he won't be back tomorrow. I'm sorry. I know. I know I told you he'd be back tomorrow. And I know he told you he'd be back tomorrow. But, you know, with medical things, sometimes you make some plans and the medical things say, ah, hold on a second. We've got other plans. The good news is, is he probably will be back on Thursday, and they found out that all those issues with his lungs is non-cancerous. So, yay, let's give cheers for Joe. Good job, yay. Yeah, you can go to Joe's page, you can, uh, you know, cheer with him as he's learned that uh, no further treatment is needed for his lungs. Hopefully, um, that means that he won't be out anymore or posting any more gross lung fluid pictures on his (laughs) social media. Here, here, I was thinking that the good news is that we were all going to his house tomorrow to do the show live. That's oh, what I was thinking. That'd be fun, except then we'd have, like, Kitty George Washington's tail in our face the whole time. And, so and I'm be, okay with that. That's for a true. While, the cat jumps you know. up on, on your lap at your house all the time anyway, yeah. doesn't it? So. And on my keyboard and on the table. And, uh, yeah, you're right. So. <laughs> Used to it. Yeah, so hopefully Joe will be back with us in a couple days, but he's gotten great medical news, so we are happy to hear it. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, I'm going to be the first to tell you that I am not a sports person, right? If you've been listening to the show for a little while, you know that Laurel Lee and sports don't necessarily... Sports ball. Uh, it's sports it's ball sports to Sports ball. Laurel. <laughs> Get the points and cheer the team. Yay. Okay, but if you are on the internet at all, you have seen a picture of Aaron Rodgers, right? In fact, when I got up this morning, my husband said to me, what are you going to talk about? And I said, I don't know. I don't know until a few hours before the show. And he said, you have to talk about Aaron Rodgers. And I said, who? And he said, Aaron Rodgers, he's the quarterback for the Jets. And I'm like, what? And he goes, he's out. He said, what are you talking about? And then I got to work and my boss said, you're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers, right? And I'm like, why are you all making me talk about sports when you know I don't know about sports? So here's what we do know. The Jets' worst fears confirmed today. Aaron Rodgers is officially out of the season with a torn Achilles. An MRI today revealed a complete tear of Rodgers' left Achilles tendon, a potentially career-ending injury for the 39-year-old quarterback. Rodgers was injured when he was sacked by Leonard Floyd on just his third play of Monday night's Bills-Jets game. Head coach Robert Soleil, am I saying that right? Sorry if I'm not. Says Zach Wilson, the former first-round pick who took over for Rodgers on Monday, will be the team's starter going forward. And so I looked up. I'm like, okay. So so I guess the big deal is is that he didn't even make it through a whole game. Like, they paid all this money to get Aaron Rodgers. Four Everybody, plays. Three plays. Yeah. So, yeah, he got four <laughs> snaps, right? He got four snaps. And that's 75 seconds. That's all he played. Oh, my gosh. See, there you go. He barely played. And, and I know that all the talk before this was, oh, my gosh, the Jets could make it to the Super Bowl this year. Aaron Rodgers is going to change it all for the Jets. And I guess the Jets historically have been a, a just a bad team, right? They just have not had any luck at all. And they swore Rodgers was going to turn it all around. That's why they spent all the money on getting him on the team. And he plays just an itty-bitty little amount of time on the very first game. And he tears his Achilles not only knocking him out for the rest of the football season, but it could be the end of his career. He's and it thir- happened oh. against his old team. That's <laughs> just it. The team oh, that really? he was on against the Green Bay Packers. And there's another story to this too, Laurel. Just I'll let you finish your thoughts. And then I laughed my bejeejees off today at one of the things that, that happened in... Oh, you got to just finish your thoughts and then I'll come back to this. Well, but, I don't have yes. many more. I was just thinking, you know, 39 year old, years old is, is old for a quarterback, right? When Tom yes. Brady decided he was going to retire, they're like, well, is Aaron Rodgers going to follow suit? What's he going to do? And Aaron Rodgers said, no, no, no. I'm going to stay. I'm going to play. Only for this to happen. So so what's the other story, Paul? 
And then he left the Packers, uh, where he won a Super Bowl and many MVPs. And he's just he's a Green Bay Packers legend, but it's almost like a love hate relationship with them on this guy uh, because of other reasons too. A lot of them political. But he is retired, and then he goes to the Jets, and the Jets think here's a savior. I bet you anything he's going to be like Brady, and he's going to win a Super Bowl for him. Well, a bar in uh, in uh, Wisconsin decided to have a football party where if the Jets lose, you don't pay for any drinks. So you set up your bar tab, you start, you, you give them your card, you drink the whole night as much as you, you know, want to drink or whatever it is. And if the Jets lose, they take care of your bill. You do not pay the bill. Whoa. So on this is in the bar. On the fourth play of the game, Aaron Rodgers goes down for the Jets, and the bar went absolutely nuts. People are celebrating. They're they're cheering. They're jumping up and down. They're high-fiving each other because they're thinking, oh, my gosh, that was the only Jets hope. This whole game is completely lost. We're drinking for free all night. And then the Jets won it in overtime on a touchdown. And all of those people that had thinking they were drinking for free oh, no. all night long, had to go settle their bill at the bar at the end oh. of the night. I just thought that was the most hilarious. They had a news crew out there that was covering this because it was such newsworthy, and they were showing the reactions of these people in the bar with their hands over their faces, knowing now they got to go up and pay that hundreds of dollars of bar tab, oh. thinking it was going to be free. So I just wow. thought that was hysterical, oh, and they're going to continue. Hilarious. They're going to the bar's going to continue to do that uh, throughout the whole year uh, of when the Jets lose. They hated the Jets so much. When the Jets lose, uh, you drink for uh, you drink for free. Wow! But the Jets turned it on them last night, didn't they? They oh, sure boy. did. I was with friends, and and my husband was like, "Can you put on the game?" And all of us are like, "We're trying to do something here." And he's like, well, I want to see the game. And so you could see his eye on it. And, the, you know, he was like watching it out of the corner of his eye the whole time. And and when that happened, he jumped up and was cheering. And we're like, what is happening? Because we don't know sports. And he's like, oh, they're winning last minute. And I'm like, oh, OK, yay or boo. I don't know who we're cheering for. Woo-hoo! Amazing. <laughs> so poor Aaron Rodgers. Tell me, people, because I'm not a sports person, you know, what does this mean for the Jets? Do you think they're done for the rest of the season? That was their only hope. What does it mean for Rodgers' career? Do you think he's done for? He's just going to retire after this? Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, and I'm sorry. He didn't do it against Green Bay. He did it against Buffalo, New York. Buffalo. But but the bar was in Green Bay. The bar was in Wisconsin. So my bad, my bad. But they were were just rooting against Aaron, their ex-quarterback. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and to be to answer your question, and I, I'd love to get some open mics on this. Uh, if you are a football fan, or even if you're not, and what you've heard uh, around the water cooler, um, I think Aaron may be done for his life. I think he's he's done. He's too old to come back, and this Achilles injury is just brutal. Because that could be ruins like a, any chances. I was gonna say that can be like a a, a career ending injury for anybody that that is a professional football player, right? Much less depending, a thirty nine year old. Depending how badly he ruptures it and tears it, yes. It, it is a, a really, really difficult injury to come back from. But when you're thirty nine, it, it's nearly impossible. So I don't he will never be able to to get back to where he was, you know, even in his his early 30s and would it be Um, smart for him to retire now yeah you know because yeah he doesn't have great choices either he retires now and that's kind of like a womp womp end of your career right or you try to come back you're not going to even be close as 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 good as you were before and you could end just not being a great quarterback and again a kind of womp womp end of your career again so (laughs) He doesn't have great choices. Tell us what you think he's going to do using that open mic feature in the WDBO app. What does it mean for the Jets? Is Aaron Rodgers done? And in case you didn't know what everybody was talking about when you opened up your Facebook this morning and saw Jets, Jets, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. Now you do. Now you know. Speaking of sports and in bad taste, DraftKings apologizing for referencing 9-11 attacks in a promotional bet. Yeah, this was a bad idea. Sports betting company DraftKings apologized Monday after using the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks to entice people to bet on baseball and football games on the anniversary of the tragedy that killed nearly 3,000 people. 
The Boston-based company offered users a 9-11-themed promotion that required three New York-based teams, the Yankees, the Mets, and the Jets, to win their games Monday, the 22nd anniversary of the attacks. And after an outcry on social media from people offended by the promotion titled Never Forget, who thought this was a good idea? DraftKings took it down and apologized. They wrote, we sincerely apologize for the feature parlay that was shared briefly in commemoration of 9-11. We respect the significance of this day for our country and especially for the families of those who were directly affected. Uh, Brett Eagleson, whose father Bruce was killed in the World Trade Center, called the move tone deaf. How many people did that go through where they're like, oh, yeah, that's great. Let's use 9-11 as a promotion for sports betting. I mean, there had to be somebody who pitched the idea, a board that said that was a good idea, somebody who wrote the script for the promotion, somebody who made the graphics for the promotion, somebody who set it up in the app or whatever on the websites and shot that out. And they all just were like, oh, yeah, this sounds like a good idea to me. There are a lot of oopsies when it comes to that stuff. Like, you don't ever wish anybody a happy Memorial Day. That's right. just, you got to remember that, that it's not that way. It's not a celebration. Um, and I heard some people, uh, and I saw some posts, and I felt like it got a little cringe to it. Um, it was in criticism of, of Biden because he didn't go to New York yesterday mm -hmm. um, saying, you know, why wasn't he there to celebrate 9-11? And I'm thinking to myself, celebrate Yeah, you don't say the word celebrate. It, it's just one of those things. You don't do that. Think about it before. So sometimes, uh, especially with DraftKings, and it, it just happened. Um, people don't think it all the way through. They just don't get it and they go oops and, and i was, was an oops yeah i was talking to a reporter nicole earlier and she said i wonder why 9 11 hasn't been made a holiday as it like like in memorial day so we could stop and think and remember and that's a good question i don't know i'd be all hmm. for you know a, a holiday and i say that even that has a bad connotation to it but you know a, a, a day to a stop remembrance and remember. day yeah a remembrance day that's what i mean let us know what you think about Aaron Rodgers, about DraftKings making this 9-11 promotional bet. You can use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. This is the Joe Kelly Show, and I'm Laurel Lee. This is WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Aaron Rodgers, you should have never left Green Bay and this would have never happened. I believe he is finished. I think he should wait and play it by ear. Everybody is different. He might heal and be all good. He might not. But retiring now and then healing completely and knowing that you could have had a few more years of game time, I think that would be worse for him. Joe from Orlando. Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles when he was 34, and he came back. So let's not give up on him. Aaron Rodgers has a three-year contract with them. Two years, $75 million guarantee. He'll come back. He'll do fine for another year, and then he'll quit. He'll retire. Have a great day, y'all. Sorry about Rodgers' injury. But I'm thinking right now, most likely they probably would contact Brady, would they? Ah. Ooh, I got to hit my mic. I don't know if Brady would come back. I mean, he might be like, yeah, sorry, guys, but I'm I'm enjoying the retired life. I don't think so. Now, uh, Terry, you say he has over 200 million in the bank, and Karen, you say he'll make it financially. I think you're right. I think you're probably right. It's just, you know, if his dream was to play football... If he didn't want to retire because he loves the game, you know, is this going to force his hand? I guess that's my question. I don't know. We we're also talking about DraftKings and how they made the poor decision of uh, using 9-11 to promote a, a, a betting thing. I don't know. They had a betting thing about the Jets and the Mets and the Yankees, and they decided to use the 9-11 attacks on the 22nd anniversary of 9-11 to promote their sports betting. Whether that promotion is poor taste or not, I am sick and tired of people getting offended over everything. I mean, let's just cancel everything because somebody gets offended. 
And typically I am with you. Typically I'm tired of the anytime anybody doesn't like something, we we take it down and we're, you know, raising a bunch of boohooers who know that if they make one bad tweet, they can get the way they want, you know. I, I typically agree with you. But 9-11, man, I mean, come on. There's some common sense to, that, that, that needs to factor in here, right? You don't you don't make fun of people that died on D Day. You don't make fun of you know people that died in Pearl Harbor. Is, is it okay to make fun of three thousand innocent lives, you know, lost so you can promote sports betting? Ah, come on, that's that's a little different than you know. Insert celebrity here said she doesn't like short haircuts, so now we've got to ban her because I have a short haircut and I'm offended. It's it's a little different in my opinion. Now, I guess people aren't with me that maybe we should have 9-11 uh, as a Memorial Day holiday. Again, I don't like saying holiday because the connotation's not quite right. But but having that day off like we do Memorial Day. Hey, it takes an act of Congress to pass to pass a national holiday. They can't even do a budget right. You think they're going to pass a holiday for us? Yeah, right. Oh, Laurel, no more holidays, please. We have so many holidays now. Before long, the calendar makers are going to have to start making calendars that give us non-holiday days. Um, Isn't that going to be confusing? (laughs) I guess. I guess you're right. But I I was talking about serious holidays, not like, like, oh, you know what today is? In fact, I pulled it because, because I thought, anyway, it's National Hug and High Five Day. So you better go give somebody a hug and a high five. I'm not talking about those holidays. We we don't get off for those, you know. I'm talking about a serious one because I don't know. But yesterday there just didn't seem to be, I don't want to say fanfare because, again, that's the wrong word. I just feel like there wasn't the stop and pause that there has been in previous years that I feel like 9-11 deserved. And I know there was the commemoration ceremonies, and I know it's been over 20 years, uh, but it just, maybe because it was such a visceral event in my life, as it was in all of our lives, if you're still alive and listening to me, um, maybe because it was such a visceral event that I feel like it needed more and that it deserves its own day. I don't know. You tell me what you think. Use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. I've got a couple more sports stories, and then we'll move on to something else. If you're like, oh, my gosh, this is not a sports station, Laurel, stop. Just a couple more, and then and then I've got a whole list of other things we're going to talk about. So stay with us. This is the Joe Kelly Show on the WDBO Network. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's News and Talk. In-depth segments on topics that matter to Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I love your show every night. You're doing great, bud. So sports betting evidently is legal, but it doesn't mean that it's not stupid and harmful, regardless of the 9-11 promotion. Well, their uh, promotional bet referencing 9-11 was certainly stupid. It absolutely was. But it's funny, Eric Erickson was talking about this earlier today, and he was talking about how he doesn't believe that sports betting should be around or he's not a fan of it. And and tell me, are you all sports bettors? Like, do you, do you use the DraftKings? I did for like a millisecond. Like, And again, I know nothing about sports, but a coworker of mine was like, get on it and you don't even have to know much and you get free money and just get on it and try because I, I want to I try this out. And so I did for like a hot second and then I didn't understand what I was doing, and so I deleted the app. But it's certainly become much, much bigger. So tell me, do you use sports betting? What do you use? Would you bet on on football or hockey or baseball or basketball? And do you think that it's a good thing or a bad thing? Let me know using that open mic feature on the WDBO app because I, I don't know much about it. Two more other quick sports stories before we move on to other things. A former NFL reporter is claiming owners made racial comments. Uh, The NFL reporter says two NFL owners made racial comments to him and the league ignored his complaints. Jim Trotter is suing the NFL, claiming his dismissal by NFL Network was done in retaliation for speaking out against the league's history of discrimination. The suit includes quotes from two NFL owners. Bill's owner... Oh, gosh, I should have looked up this name. Terry 
Pegula, Pegula, Pe- I'm sorry, I'm not a sports person, allegedly told him if the black players don't like it here, they should go back to Africa and see how bad it is. Trotter also claims Cowboys owner Jerry Jones told him when asked about the lack of black professionals in the NFL front offices, he said, quote, if blacks feel some kind of way, they should buy their own team and hire who they want to hire. In both cases, Potter uh, says that he raised complaints. Trotter, I should say, says he raised complaints and concerns about the remarks, but no remedial action was taken. So do you think the NFL should respond to these allegations or, or is this a, another fluff for, for nothing? Do those those owners need to make public statements or, you know, tell me what you think using that open mic feature on the WDBO app. One more sports story, and that is about some other networks. Let me find it. It is about the WWDE and the UFC joining, and now I've lost. There it is. Okay, two major sports and entertainment companies are now under the same umbrella. The merger of UFC and WWE into the TKO Group Holdings is now complete after Endeavor and the WWE closed their deal. Vince McMahon, is it it Vince McMahon or Vince McMahon? I don't know. I'm sorry. I need, Michael, where are you? McMahon. Is it McMahon? Okay, thank you. It's spelled McMahon, but yeah, okay, McMahon, I thought so. Yeah, it's McMahon. Will become TKO's executive chairman, while Dana White will become the CEO of UFC. So somebody brought up, you know, it's, it's interesting that UFC is okay kind of teaming up with a brand that is known for its scriptedness, right? UFC, which is is a fighting, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, group, you know, when it's supposed to be athletes and not scripted at all, they're teaming up with a, a franchise that is known for scripting the outcomes of their fights. And do you think that's a good move or do you think that's, you know, just business and has nothing to do with one another? I mean, despite his his history and his scandals, Vince McMahon has made an empire out of something, and that's to be sure. I mean, he's a good businessman, but so is Dana White. So why do they even need to team up? I don't know. You sports people, tell me what you think. Use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. Speaking of scandals, we're moving to celebrity news real quick, and you're probably like, oh, my gosh. You know you're on a news station, Laurel. What in the heck? But this is kind of newsworthy because, again, once again, everybody's talking about it. Everybody is bashing Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis because they came out with a um, video having to do with Danny Masterson. Now, in case you didn't know, all three of these actors, actresses were on that 70s show. And Masterson, who played Hyde on that show, was just sentenced to 30 years in prison after being found guilty of raping two women. So Ashton and Mila were, I guess, asked to write character letters to the judge in support of Masterson and a lesser case following the verdict. And then, of course, it turns around and he was sentenced to three decades in prison. So I guess in Ashton's letter, the actor advocated that Danny had nothing but positive influence on his life and that he is a person that is consistently there for you when you need him. Mila's letter similarly doubled down on Danny's goodness and genuine nature. So after that verdict was handed down, they released this video, which is getting all kinds of just lashback. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. And the video is kind of awkward to watch. Like they speak very stiltedly. You can tell they're like, 
taking turns speaking. Um, somebody wrote on uh, Reddit, they said, uh, everything about this video was extremely over-the-top fake. There's no makeup. She's not wearing any makeup. No accessories, no hairstyling. Ashton's got a 5 o'clock shadow. They're in plain T-shirts. It's very practice. The will take turns speaking. The concerns, expressions on their faces. There's no extravagant scenery in the background, and they're reading a lawyered script. And they wrote nothing worse than rich, entitled bleeps pretending to be relatable. And this article I was reading also talked about just the the it did not it did not strike a chord with many is is how they put it. Um, it's less than one minute long, um, and somebody wrote Ashton Mila's apology video is the most insincere rehearsed thing ever. Somebody says it ticked me off. I've never seen anything more scripted and rehearsed in my life. And Mila was straight up annoyed. <laughs> Question mark. I. Did Ashton and Mila need to come out and do that? Because I feel like they just put more spotlight on themselves coming out and giving the apology video. You know, they, they, I'm not saying what Masterson did was right in any way, shape or form, but they were supporting who they thought was their friend, right? They were supporting the guy they thought they knew. And maybe they should have just written their letters and that been the end of it. Because if somebody had come out and been like, well, Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher wrote letters supporting Danny Masterson, I feel like that they would have written that on the internet and it would have died there, right? Maybe somebody would have been like, oh, I hate those actors. But it would have just died. It, it, nobody would have cared. The guy's going to jail. That's the end of it, right? Instead, they came out and made this fakey looking video that's super duper scripted and and just, it was, it was cringy. It was incredibly cringy the way they, they just looked so PR, you know, uh, written the the way they had the no makeup and they're behind, they're just wood behind them. And, you know, I don't know. Am I being too rough on Ashton and Mila? Do you think they deserve, you know, a little bit of leniency because they, they really do feel bad for what they did wrong? Or, or am I spot on with saying that this is just nonsense trying to protect their own butts? CYA, if you will, right? Trying to protect their own brand now that their friend has been sentenced to jail. You know, I, I, I doubt they would be giving uh, apology videos if, if he was released, right? You tell me. Use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. This is the Joe Kelly Show, and you're listening to WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, now the three big things you need to know. Three. Pine Hills is getting ready to become one of the centers of transportation in Central Florida. FDOT gave the green light for contractors to start work on a new Lynx Transfer Center. The new project is projected to cost $450 million. Two. Two. Apple is unveiling a number of new products. The company unveiled the new iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Pro during a launch event today. Apple also introduced their first ever carbon neutral product, the Series 9 Apple Watch. One. CDC One. advisors are giving the green light to an updated COVID shot. It's meant to target the Omicron series that spread earlier in the year. Everyone six months and older are recommended to get either the Pfizer or Moderna shots. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. News, weather, traffic, all the things you want on your drive home. Plus, Joe Kelly being, well, Joe Kelly. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. Um, good job, uh, Laura Lee. I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, I'm a Hispanic and I'm a conservative Hispanic. And uh, I've been called a Dio Taco um, from uh, from some of the uh, liberal groups. But, uh, you know, I don't let that uh, bother me. I wear it as a badge of honor. And I think people are just too thin-skinned when it comes to these matters. No, the NFL should not make anything to him. None of those comments were directed at him. It was not a slam to him. Yes, it may have been derogatory, but give me a break. He's just looking for a lawsuit. Give me a break, people. That in reference to a NFL reporter who was fired, and now he's coming back suing the NFL, saying, well, now they've made, they made mean comments. I'm African-American, and they made, they made mean comments about black players or black professionals in the NFL, and, and I felt uncomfortable, and I didn't like it. 
So I was asking you, do you think he has something going there? And should these owners, the Bills owner and the Cowboys owner, who were the two people named in the lawsuit, should they say something? Or is he just looking for a lawsuit? So, so far, y'all say he's just looking for a lawsuit. I also asked if you guys sports bet. And and because DraftKings made a a promotion using 9-11 using sports betting. And we began talking about if sports betting is a good thing or a ridiculous thing. If my thing will play, I could play this open mic. And it's not working. My computer began shutting down on me in the break. So uh, we'll see if we can get anything going here. Anyways, I said that I uh, was done with the sports stories. I lied a little bit. But this one's a good sports story. This one's not a controversial sports story anymore. So here we go. My fellow Floridians. Publix is kicking off a new football season by releasing four new NFL-themed Team-themed subs. Team-themed subs. The company worked with corporate chefs to draw up a game plan for the four new NFL subs representing the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Jaguars, Jags, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Miami Dolphins. So if you go to Publix and you want the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sub, what you're going to get is a different spin to a classic chicken tender sub with a spicy gold sauce. If you go and get the Jacksonville Jag sub, that features a flavor profile centered around barbecue. The Atlantic Falcon sub has chicken tenders with a sweet maple seasoning, bacon, peach preserves, and a sriracha mayonnaise. And the Miami Dolphins themed sa- sandwich is a spin on a Cuban sandwich. So just another way to uh, enjoy your NFL season being back. Head to Publix and guess, guess get your favorite team sandwich. Yum. This is Laurel Lee, and I'm in for Joe Kelly on The Joe Kelly Show. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Triple Team Traffic. Heavy delays heading into downtown right now on I-4 westbound from Princeton on to the 408 eastbound. Uh, They cleared that earlier crash near Goldenrod, but it is slow and go from just past downtown or in through downtown to past 436 still have that crash on the i4 westbound exit ramp at obt it's blocking the left lane on the ramp and a new crash at kirkman road at vineland protech air conditioning and plumbing service for honesty integrity and 100 percent customer satisfaction call protech 407-291-1644 or visit protechac.com from the wdbo triple team traffic center I'm Paul Cross. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Connected to our community. Talk local issues and events with Joe Kelly. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let Joe know what interests you. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Well, this is the Joe Kelly Show, and my name is Laurel Lee. Normally, I'm sitting in the anchor chair for this uh, show. I'm the one you usually hear giving you the news updates and the three bigs. And occasionally I'll I'll talk to Joe about any of the topics he brings up. But Joe is out dealing with some health issues. He's all right. He'll be back very, very soon. In the meantime, I'm here talking to you about all kinds of stuff. We started off with sports, which, you know, is a big leap for me because sports is not my game. But with the help of you all and our open mic feature in the WDBO app, we had a really nice discussion about Aaron Rodgers and sports betting and all kinds of stuff. I want to move to a story a little local here. I say a little local. It's super local. It's Osceola County. So Osceola County is announcing that it's ending a program that provided students with automatic access to the Osceola County Library System. I'm reading this from our sister station, WFTV. The Osceola County School Board decided to discontinue its OLL Access Pass program. Officials said the OLL Access Pass automatically opted in all K-12 through students in the district and provided them with direct access to all the books, materials, and resources housed in the public library through their school libraries. So as long as you were a student, you could get into the library and you essentially had already a library card. You could get anything you needed there, right? School leaders said the decision to end the program was made in order to comply with Florida's HB 1069 and HB 1469 recent legislation and in the spirit of parental choice. While the program is being discontinued, the Osceola School District will continue to promote literacy 
and encourage all parents to get a public library card for their students, an Osceola County Public School spokesperson said in a news release. Officials said the school media specialists will work closely with the Osceola County Library staff throughout the school year to provide opportunities on campus and at school events for parents to sign up for their library cards if interested. And I read that and I got angry because I feel like this is in the spirit of well, you're making it more difficult for us to have these books in this library, and so we're just going to stop letting students into the library, right? So to remind you, the HB, uh, let me see here, 1069 law is the one that's that uh, the provisions designed to protect children in public school. The bill includes requirements for age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate instruction for all students in pre-kindergarten through grade 12. Grade 12. I'm reading this from flsenate.gov. The bill includes requirements for specific terminology and instruction related to health and reproductive education in schools and requires that all materials used for such instruction be approved by the Department of Education extends the prohibition on classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity to pre-kindergarten through grade 8. The bill prohibits district uh, school boards from imposing or enforcing requirements that personnel or students be referenced with pronouns, da 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 And then if we move on to HB 1467, scroll down here, it says... Each public elementary school is required by the bill to publish on its website a list of all materials maintained in the school library or require as part of a book list used in a classroom. In uh, in addition, each district school board is required to adopt or post on the website procedures for developing library media center collections. At a minimum, they must require book selections to be free of pornography and prohibited materials harmful to minors, suited to school needs, and appropriate for the grade level or age group. Require cons, uh, consultation for reputable, professionally re, uh, recognized sources and school community. So it's that whole no sex, no pornography in books for children that shouldn't be reading about sex and pornography in books, right? And while I don't want my elementary school child reading about pornography and sex in books, the library is a place for all, right? It's for majorly the... Uh, underprivileged, right? And so Osceola County is saying, we are just going to shut it down. And if you want to come into the library, you need to get your parent in here and get you a library card, which is fine for the majority of people. Who it's not fine for is kids whose parents are working two or three jobs, whose parents are barely home because they're trying to make ends meet in this economy that is just over the moon expensive nowadays, right? These parents who, if they are home, need to sleep or need to cook or need to go to the grocery store or need to clean the house. Parents that when their kid comes up to them and says, well, I need you to take me to the library because they won't let me get books anymore because I need you to sign a waiver form so that I can get the card. They're like, no, no way. I don't have time for this. And that is doing such a disservice to these kids who want to learn and want to read. And so what is the answer? Can we label the books that have pornography in them? Would that be so hard? If I know that there's some, maybe some graphic stuff in there that that maybe, you know, third graders shouldn't be reading. Can we put like a red sticker on it? And they have to, you know, be 18 and up for this book, right? Kiddos, you you, you can't run out this book. I'm so sorry. But to take it away, it's it 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 reeks to me of we are doing this out of bitterness instead of we are doing this to keep all of the children safe. Right? And it it frustrates me because I feel like the wrong people are getting hurt. This is another one of those, well, he DeSantis is is banning all the books. He's banning all the books, so so we're just going to shut down the library to all the students because we don't have time to go through and categorize all the books. Or, you know, I I, I know library. I love libraries. Libraries are a sacred place. They they really are, but they're not slammed. Okay, you're, you're telling me we can't reorganize the books for what is kid friendly, what is student friendly. Here are the elementary school books. 
They're not going to have any graphic sex scenes in them. You know, I yes, Paul. What about our what about our our, our video libraries and blockbusters of the world, where at at one time they did have an adult section to rent. Kids couldn't rent that stuff. If a if a book was considered offensive or not appropriate for children under the age of thirteen, could they still make that available but put that into an adult section? Right, and 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 if that's what we have these options available to us. So it I'm feels a, to me I'm not a big fan of censorship completely. Compl- and I understand and I'm full hearted supporting of keeping this material away from kids. Yeah, um, I agree. But there's got there's gotta be a way that if you have a choice to to make and to do that and you want to do that kind of stuff, um, maybe there's there's some sort of way that you can read, you know, a book that was considered banned. I mean, right. I am not for banning books. I want to make that clear. I I think that everybody should be able to read whatever they want. And the more people read and the more things they read, the smarter you will become. And the more you will be making your own decisions about politics, about the world, about ethics, about morality, than just being spoon fed what you see on the television or what you read on Facebook. Right. So I am not for banning books, but I am for keeping appropriate books in the hands of children. There should be no reason my third grader can read about sexual acts in their school library. So why, instead of categorizing these books, are we just stomping our feet and crossing our arms and saying, well, we're just we're just going to shut down the library to the students then. If they want a library card, their parents have to come in and say it's okay. They have to sign these forms. That's that's just how we're doing it. Because we're mad that DeSantis banned the books and, and we just don't want to work with them at all. For the good of the children, let's figure out how to work with them, okay? Let us know what you in think. In our chat room? Well, I'm sorry, Laurel, go ahead. No, go you ahead. I was just going to uh, ask people to use the open mic feature in, to let us know. It, yeah, and in the chat room, um, I do see uh, one of our favorites there, Chris. Uh, he made a valid point, though, in, including now in, in colleges and things. You don't even have books. Everything is online. Everything is <laughs> – that's just the way it is, except if there's a course where the teacher has written the book, the book for the for the course, then they want you to buy it because it's like $200. Oh, of course. Uh, but there are still – there are still those uh, those people that like to have a hardbound book in their hand to read, uh, and not read a Kindle or not read you know something from a computer uh, in another way or even on their phone. They want that hard copy book, uh, just as same as some of us in in my generation like to have their hands on a vinyl record and put that record on the turntable. Yeah, you could just listen to you could stream it on Spotify or whatever you want, but there are still people that love to have those those that access to those books and again uh, the whole banning thing is the that's the biggest problem because that's supposed to be our freedom we shouldn't be banning the freedom of of writing in book and and having a book accessible if someone wants to access it uh, and they are an adult if it's an adult material i just think about all the stories you've heard from greats in our history that talked about how they didn't have anything growing up you know their their parents didn't have money to buy them anything or you know they they, or even home wasn't a safe place for them so they would go to the library right and they could read and they could escape from their world or they could learn all this stuff and then that's what gave them the the inspiration to become the great people they were or get that higher education or, or gave them you know the influence to to write these incredible novels and i just think of all these future greats that may be damaged because instead of working for them we're 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 you know again stomping our feet and having hissy fits and getting mad that the governor is trying to figure out a way to keep porn out of our children's hands and we're just shutting it down i it just it frustrates me t- to no end so let me know what you think uh, use that open mic feature in our wdbo app speaking of people causing a rusting, ruckus and stomping their feet reportedly a group of communists taunted jason aldean over aldean's don't try this in a small town attitude you remember that song this song right here try that in a small town
People from the Revolution Club of Chicago protested his concert, marching, yelling, setting flags on fire before the police arrived. They said they weren't scared to attempt anything and signaled out Aldean in particular, calling him a fascist piece of poo. One man yelled while using a megaphone. The guy continued, we will try that in a big city and we will try it right in front of your concert. After a while, numerous Chicago Police Department officers arrived and ordered everyone to disperse, declaring that their meeting had been illegal and that they were disrupting the peace. These were apparently no other uh, incidents when the gathering dispersed, hence why there was no arrests made. So, once again, you don't like something, so we're throwing our, our, our butts on the ground and stomping our feet and crying. Really? You're going to protest a concert? That's... That's that was your idea of, of a good you got him. You got Jason Aldean. Good job, protesters. I'm sure he'll stop his music career now. He'll never play that song again. What a good job you did. <laughs> I'm Laura Lee. This is the Joe Kelly Show. You can always join us in our conversations. We're streaming live under the WDBO Facebook page. You can also use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. We'll be right back on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Insightful. You tell the truth from your point of view. Entertaining. Man, that guy is a lot taller than me sounds on the radio. And engaging. When we hear you on the radio, it's a good thing. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Right, Laurel Lee. Thank you. That makes... What else are they doing? You're a librarian. What else could you possibly be doing other than organizing and sorting books that sounds like right up your alley i think i thought librarians would be lining up to do that job osceola county's public library system says that they are discontinuing uh letting their osceola county students into the library essentially for free they didn't have to sign up for a library card if you were a student you could get in and you could run stuff out and and and, and now they're saying no more no more your parent has to come in now because the governor said that if you should get your hands on anything that's porn, we, then we're in trouble and we, we don't want to get in trouble. So instead of us sorting the books and maybe labeling what might have graphic content, you know, like they do on music and movies and everything else, we, we're not we're not we're not doing that. We're not sorting the books. What? What do you expect from us? That's, that's not what we do at a library. So instead, no, your parent has to come in and get you a library card and and, and sign a thing that says that, you know, if, if you should get your hands on something, it's not our fault. Your parent's allowing you in here. Come on. That's that's bananas. That's ridiculous. Shh. Oh, I'm not allowed to say so, it. Sorry. <laughs> Shh. I was just trying. I was just practicing being a librarian. Hang on. Shh. <laughs> yeah, I had my finger to my lips. Good. and I, How did I do? Good. I think you did I'm not fantastic. Gonna, I am not going to sort... I'm not sorting those books. No. I just want to practice my shh, right. and then I'll be okay. Right. <laughs> and I love you, librarians. I'm not not dissing on librarians. I love you, librarians. But what in the world, Osceola County? Come on now. Your job is the keeper of the books. You know what books are in your library, right? You've handled them thousands of times. So what is the big deal about putting a little sticker on one that says, ah, you know, if you're 13 years or, or younger, may, maybe you shouldn't have that, that book in your hands. Maybe that's a little too graphic for you. But, you know, instead instead we're shutting down the library. So that's their idea of a, of a, a smart idea, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know. You tell me what you guys think. Use that open mic feature in the WDBO app. A whistleblower is claiming the CIA is trying to cover up COVID-19 origins. Oh, boy, we've heard this before, right? A CIA whistleblower claims the agency tried to cover up an investigation into the origins of COVID-19. The official told Congress that the CIA offered a significant monetary incentive to members of its COVID discovery team to say they were unable to determine whether the virus originated a lab in Wuhan, China. The whistleblower has not been named, but was described as a multi-decade senior level current agency officer. Congress has given the CIA a deadline of September 26th to hand over all records regarding the COVID discovery team and its research. This, by the way, is is coming as a new COVID shot is, is coming out this week. So 
You can go get another one if you want. It's coming to pharmacies near you. The CDC just approved it. I don't know about you. I'm not getting another shot. And, and, and I'm not here to tell you not to get a shot. I think your doctor needs to tell you whether or not you're getting a shot. I'm just telling you I'm not getting another one. I just, I, I, I just don't think I need to do it, okay? I don't have any comorbidities. I'm not elderly. And I just don't trust what they say anymore, to be, to be frank. So I don't know. What do you think of the whistleblower's claims? Do you think that it came from somebody eating a bat? Or do you think it came from the Wuhan lab? Will the government handle the pandemic? Uh, It will be a major issue in 2024 is what I'm trying to say. Do you think this is all going to come back again and we're going to talk about COVID? We'll see. Those uh, debates are going to be here sooner than rather than later. One more cool kind of story before we get to the latest news, weather and traffic here. A Dutch man billed as the Indiana Jones of the art world has helped police track down a stolen Van Gogh painting. The painting, the Persange Garden of Noonan, I think I said that right, dates back to 1884 and was stolen from an Amsterdam museum in March of 2020. The thief was caught a year later, but the painting was never found. Arthur Brand, who's garnered worldwide uh, reputation for finding lost works of art, managed to track down the painting, which was stuffed in a blue Ikea bag. That painting is $6 million. (laughs) So good for Arthur Brand. This world's Indiana Jones. This is the Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. This is WDBO, 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Connected to our community. Talk local issues and events with Joe Kelly. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let Joe know what interests you. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. All right. All right. Now, we were talking about uh, vaccine hesitancy with dog owners. uh, As dog owners are evidently concerned that uh, vaccines are going to get... Give their, Stupidest thing I ever heard. Are gonna give are gonna give their dogs autism. <laughs> to which we asked, can a dog even get autism? Hi Joe Kelly. This is Annie from Oviedo, and we just wanted you to know that yes, what? dogs can be autistic. What? So good to know. Thanks. Love your show. Oh Bye. my gosh, now we're making fun of people. Well, not people, dogs. Who were autistic. No, you guys should feel no, ashamed of yourselves for making fun. Hang on, hang on, I, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, Google, can dogs be autistic? On the website PetMD.com, they say, can a dog have autism? While some of these behaviors are unique to humans, researchers have found that, in fact, ASD can occur in dogs. But it's called canine dysfunctional behavior. Oh, my goodness. You guys so were, when they act, you guys were when the, wrong. I told you dogs can get autism. They say, I thought there was no proof of that. They do have certain mannerisms, like if they're chasing their tail or they're doing something. They think, oh, they have a little bit of mannerism like it, but no one has ever officially come out and said right, that dogs and autism, cats can get it's, autism. It's just like a autism. different way of thinking, and you can't quite pick up some behavioral cues, right? And we don't know what dogs are thinking half the time anyway. So how I, have an, I have an autistic daughter, okay? I have a lot of experience in this. Sure. I don't believe that, first of all, I don't believe that vaccines cause autism, and especially in dogs. Uh, but I Hang on, I hang just... on. You can send your emails to paul.cross. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I mean, but anyway, um, I, I think that they you do have those behaviors in animals, but I, I God, I'd really like to hear more information on whether or not they can diagnose a dog or a cat with autism. Yeah, or on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. That just seems suspect. It seems sus uh, to me. All right, let's move on. We so uh, there's a there's a study here from uh, GoBankingRates.com, and uh, they did an analysis of personal finances to determine uh, the living wage in each state. So they calculated the minimum amount that a single person would need. To follow the 50-30-20 budget using data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So the 50-30-20 budget, what is that? That's 30% goes to to your mortgage or rents, uh, 50% goes to uh, expenses, and 30% goes to savings? Is that how that, is that the 50? Hang on, hang on, let me try this again. Hey, Google, 
What does the 50 30 20 budget mean? On the website investopedia.com, they say the rule is to split your after tax income into three categories of spending 50% on needs, 30% on wants, and 20% on savings. One, this intuitive and straightforward rule can help you draw up a reasonable budget that you can stick to over time in order to meet your financial goals. Hmm. All right. So there you go. That's interesting. That's not at all. I was, I was nowhere close to the 50, 30, 20 uh, definition as to what that means. So uh, what would you say then is the most expensive state, the, the, the highest amount that a single person needs to earn to be able to get by uh, in the 50, 30, 20 budget? Most the, expensive state after taxes. They said the after yeah. taxes is when it's you either New York it. or California. Uh, New York and California are both in the top five. They are not number one. Wow. Hawaii. Hawaii is number one. Ah. In Hawaii, you need to earn as a single person one hundred twelve thousand four hundred eleven dollars. Wow. Massachusetts, you have to earn eighty seven thousand. That's number two, Massachusetts. Hell, if you ever been to Boston Logan Airport, just to park at the airport, literally it's like fifty dollars a day to park at the airport there. It's crazy. Uh California is third with eighty thousand. New York is next with seventy three thousand. And then Alaska. I would think Alaska would be cheaper to live in, but Alaska is in the top five. It's number five. Uh seventy one thousand dollars you need to live in Alaska. Uh the the rest of these states are listed alphabetically, so hang on. Let's make it to Florida. So the the annual living wage for a single person in Florida needs to be $57,064. $57,000. If, if you are a single person in Florida listening to my voice right now and you don't earn at least $57,064 or $57,000 and change, uh, then, then you are not getting by <laughs> i don't i don't need to tell you that <laughs> we all know that there are a lot of people that are barely or not getting by i mean this is the worst economy that many of us have ever lived through uh, for those of us who were born after the the great depression which is like you know all of us for the most part um but the, the, I mean, the economy is terrible. The inflation is is through the roof. It's harder and harder to afford things. Personal debt, personal credit card debt, is at a record high right now. The amount of people dipping into their four hundred one k savings is at a record high right now. Our economy is an absolute shambles, and it drives me batty. To hear people talking up the economy, and and by people I generally mean Biden, his administration, and Democrats, uh, and 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 they're flat out lying every time they talk about how good and strong the economy is, because the rest of us know that that is not the case. It's just not the case, and it infuriates this is me when people individual say individual now, Joe, or, this is or in, household, that's not even married, not household, not married. Uh, this is a single person. If you're a single person in the state of Florida, uh, you need to earn fifty-seven thousand. Uh, in Alabama, you only need to earn forty-six thousand. Georgia, you only need to earn forty-nine. Arkansas, forty-seven. Boy, those are states that you probably don't want to live in. Arkansas and Alabama. Uh, Indiana, forty-nine thousand. Iowa, forty-eight thousand. Kansas, forty-seven thousand. Kentucky, forty-seven thousand. Uh, I'm just going to the states that are, that are affordable, uh, more affordable. Mississippi, forty-five thousand. So the southern states are quite a bit more affordable than the than the northern states. Uh, let's see, forty-seven thousand in M- Missouri, uh, forty-nine thousand in Nebraska, Oklahoma, forty-six thousand. See, I moved here from Oklahoma, and I'm telling you, things were so much more affordable in Oklahoma uh, than they are here in Florida. So in Oklahoma, you only need to earn forty-six thousand. Tennessee is 48,000. Unless your daughter goes to college at Tennessee, then it's that much every year. Uh, them speaking for a friend. <laughs> it's uh, so I saw another survey, which I this is the dumbest survey imaginable. Do you guys like going to the beach? Laurel, you're a beach beach person, aren't you? I love the beach. Paul, are you down for the beach? Are you DTB? Yeah, absolutely. You're down to beach. What about mm-hmm. you, Danny? Are you DTB? Do you like the beach? You're shaking your head yes. Oh, I, I love the beach. It's radio. Down for the beach. You're down down for down. the beach. 
All right, so this is so I, I this is the dumbest imaginable survey. I would hate to be the person calling out for this survey. One in six beachgoers find sand in their clothes at least a week after their trip, according to a survey of 2,000 Americans. Can you even imagine making that phone call? Hey, I'm calling about a survey. Have you been to the beach? Yeah. A week after your beach, have you ever found sand in your pants? I mean, what is what a stupid thing to survey about. But since so many of us go to the beach, I think we can at least relate to it. 84% say going to the beach is a necessity during the summer. And respondents say they would drive three hours for the perfect beach day. Fortunately, here in Central Florida, we don't have to drive three hours. Unless you're going to the Gulf Coast, then you might be driving three hours if you want to go to Clearwater Beach. Uh, when it comes to beach etiquette, 58% agree that sitting too close to someone else is rude. If there is still open space, other no-nos include littering and shaking off sand near others. Just, you know what I have to think about this? I'm just going to throw that away. I'm Joe Kelly. You're listening to The Joe Kelly Show. More coming up next. Stay with us here on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Triple Team Traffic. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Insightful. You tell the truth from your point of view. Entertaining. Man, that guy is a lot taller than he sounds on the radio. And engaging. When we hear you on the radio, it's a good thing. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. So I have a um, <clears throat> I have a macabre story to share. Is that <clears throat> am I pronouncing that right? Macabre, macabre, macabre. It's macabre. Ma- no, that's a bird. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's macabre, isn't it? Macabre. It's macabre. I did I did the Google pronouns and it came back macabre. K A A B. Uh, hang on, listen. Macabre. So I'm listening. This is dictionary.com. Macabre. Macabre. Isn't that weird? It's okay. it's macabre. 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 Does that voice sound like mine? Macabre. 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 Now it's lost all meaning to me. It's uh, semantic satiation, according to Ted Lasso, when you say a word too many times, and then it sound becomes a sound, no longer a word. So... So I, as as you, as some of you are aware, and, and and as all of my team here is aware, my wife and I, my beautiful, adoring, loving wife, and and yes, I'm trying to make up for talking about Martha Stewart earlier today, uh, but my wife and I live in a 55 plus community. We are the youngest people in the fit. We barely qualify, right? They checked my ID before we moved in. I am 55 years old. I am the youngest person in a 55 plus community. Well, we have a neighbor that's like four doors down, five doors down. And the, the leasing office wedged a note in their door. Like, so if you open the door, it's going to fall down, that kind of thing. Well, the note has been in their door for like a week now. It's a 55 plus community. Is it wrong that every time I walk by, I go, (laughs) Paul, would you do the same thing? Of course I would. A 55 plus community. It's like, okay, wait a minute now. So far, it's still like it's like having seven days worth of newspapers (laughs) piled up in their front yard. Still smells fresh, which I'm very happy about that. (laughs) My name is Joe Kelly. Thank you so much for being a part of the Joe Kelly show. Thanks to Paul, Laurel and Danny. Uh, For a great job, as always, tonight. We'll catch you back here tomorrow afternoon, 5 till 7, on WDBO.